Okay, here we are. It's Friday. I'm going to read you some random facts. These are, this, we're in the animal classification, if you're wondering. That's why there were so many random facts about animals. The last one I gave you was the pancake batfish, which I never, ever want to run into one of those things. Sloths have hair that's so coarse and long that it's, it's a great place for algae to thrive. The algae works so well as camouflage for sloths that some of the animals ended up reaching for their own arms, thinking they were tree branches, only to fall down to their deaths. Poor little sloth. There's, get on YouTube, look up sloth. So this guy saves a sloth that's trying to work across the walk, work, walk across the highway, picks him up, attaches him to a tree. The sloth is on the tree. As the man starts to turn, the sloth reaches out with his arm to, to touch the man. It's so precious. Like, it's the little sloth's way of thank, thanking the man. Swans only have one partner for their whole lives. In some cases, when one swan dies, its partner dies too from a broken heart. Wow. The, some of these things about animals... <laughs> This surprised me about a butterfly. When monarch butterflies experience food shortages, they can become cannibalistic and they can eat monarch caterpillars or eggs. There you go. Don't mess with a hungry monarch. <laughs> well, we're in the book of Hosea. Now you're, you're, I'm going to read you verse one, chapter one, verse one. And this is one of the most fascinating books in the Bible because of the story. The word of the Lord that came to Hosea, son of Berea, during the rains, and th this is, well, I want you to get this picture. He's a prophet, Hosea is a prophet, right? And during the reign of Uzziah, Jothan, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and during the reign of Jeroboam, son of Jehosh, king of Israel. So that, again, just to help you understand, that these prophets are, there there's certain uh, kings that are in place and they're the prophet for that time, okay? And, and so he's telling us right off the bat when Hosea served. Now, it wasn't always fun being a prophet, all right? This is verse two, right out of the gate. When the Lord began to speak through Hosea, the Lord said to him, Go marry a promiscuous woman and have children with her. For like an adulterous wife, this land is guilty of unfaithfulness to the Lord. So he literally had ho used Hosea as a living illustration. Okay. He did that, I believe, with Ezekiel and Jeremiah, where like one of those had to take off their clothes and 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 lay down in the marketplace and, and it was a living illustration in other words god went to great lengths to help israel understand their condition there's an old song by kenny rogers uh when he was the first i think it's called first edition look uh, i just stepped in to find out what can my condition is in and yeah, I can almost sing it, but I'll spare you that. So, uh, what, and this is, I was told this, and I, I still like it today. They said the first job of a leader is to help people understand reality. You know what reality is, don't you? Reality is what you run into that causes you pain. Because a lot of people don't live in reality. And I'm not talking about mental illness. I'm talking about there's people that make up stories in their own head and then all of a sudden they run into reality and then they get, there's pain. They're like, what's going on? Well, you you didn't get life and how it really works. And so this is how it works. Um, so he married Gomer, daughter of Diblam, and she conceived and bore him a son. And And so he said to have children with her. Now, some of you should be asking, why would God tell? Because he wasn't sinning. It's not a sin to marry a promiscuous woman. Not wise. She's doing the sinning. But God's telling him. And so he obeys God and does this. 
and he has children with with her and she uh got sold into slavery okay and she probably was a prostitute as well because other versions actually uses that word and even more of the street word and so here she's on the block and Gomer goes and buys her back. I mean, Jose goes and buys Gomer back. But it was all to show the length of God's love and grace and mercy that God would go to in order to get his people to repent and, and come back and walk with him. So it's it's a unusual love story. It, 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 and it's not so much the love story of Hosea to Gomer. It's the love story of God for his people, all right? And don't miss this, okay? Don't miss that this was hurting God. Um, when when spouses are unfaithful, uh, then there there's a level of pain there that, most I hope you never have to experience. I've never had the experience. Matter of fact, a lot of the reason I married Jan was her character. I knew, I thought, I could not, how would I survive the pain in a marriage where I knew my wife cheated? And, you know, so I just, Jan's not that. And, and so that's been very fortunate for me. But there's a level in that, one, Hosea kept obeying God. That's one. Kept obeying God throughout this whole story of, and it's, and the story that God was telling through uh, Hosea and Gomer was that I really love you. Even though you have, see, what God does is he uses, there's physical adultery, right? You go, your spouse, and you go and have Yahtzee. That's the term for that we use for you know what and and with someone else well when when Israel or we go and worship another god that's spiritual adultery in other words we're being unfaithful to this god and this god sent his son to die for us and to be raised from the dead so it's even worse in our case because god's love is so immense so unfathomable it, it, it you know, unbelievable. And for us to go and serve other gods to, to do that is just, it's so wrong. So hopefully, by the grace of God, you're not doing that. You're you're serving God with a whole heart. And we all are going to mess up. But you confess that sin and tell God you want to grow. I just talked to a lady today. She's growing so much. She started reading her Bible for the first time. And, and and this is what's good about thirst is the ministry here is to help people get closer to God. <laughs> she was telling me how much closer to God she is today. So we are thank, thank God for her and, and how she's, you know, she goes, I've always want, been spiritual, but now that I got the Bible and integrating that in my life, did you hear that? Integrating. And yeah, we're pulling it in, living it. And that's that's what we're supposed to do. Live, live full out for Jesus. I want to pray. Okay, Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for Friday. Thank you for the weekend. Help us, Lord, to serve you with the whole heart. In Jesus' name, amen.